Kyle Rittenhouse is not guilty, my friends. You have a right to defend yourselves. Be armed, be dangerous, and be moral. That was Madison Cawthorn, who is a sitting member of Congress, encouraging his followers to be dangerous, but also moral simultaneously, because it definitely works that way. And he's one of many far-right individuals who feel emboldened after Kyle Rittenhouse was found not guilty. But he's not alone, because Steven Crowder, with his millions of YouTube subscribers, encouraged them also to take up arms at not just some protests, but to show up at every single protest. If he didn't bring a gun that night, he could have been raped or killed, just yeah. to be clear. There would have been one well, death. And, and certainly if him. he didn't shoot that night, he would be dead. We, he would absolutely be dead. If he had his gun and didn't yeah. shoot, he would be dead. Absolutely. We know of at least, well, what, five, six, ten, twelve other guys that had guns that night that had yeah. no problems. They didn't shoot anybody because guess what? Nobody attacked them. Right. The only That's reason the difference. that that inanimate piece of metal hanging, pointing down the entire night was ever brought up and aimed at anyone was because of a threat. Period. Yeah. And that's your right. You get to defend yourself. I am so happy. Like, I was, I literally almost it's ran It's not only your light. right, <laughs> it needs to be encouraged. Yeah. It needs to be encouraged. Tell, and this is, this is why you cannot accept, look, it's so wrong that we teach young men that violence is immoral. It's not. It's not. Violence is amoral. You can use violence to publicly execute a 17-year-old like Grosskreutz tried to do, or you can use violence to disarm and protect yourself from being murdered. You can use violence to rape the helpless, or you can use violence to help the helpless from being raped. But guess what? If the righteous aren't willing to defensively use violence where appropriate, where moral, evil will reign. We've seen it. F Kyle Rittenhouse doesn't need to see a bunch of doublespeak conservatives when he's sitting in that chair saying, oh, he shouldn't have been there, but I guess it's self-defense. No, 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 no. This is one of those instances where he needed to see that cavalry coming over that hill. And what I'm saying is you need to be on that hill every day from now on. Not sometimes. All the time. Not going out hunting anyone. That's not what Kyle did. Of course not, Stephen. You'd never encourage violence in the same way you definitely didn't encourage violence by working your viewers up into a frenzy by lying to them about the 2020 election being stolen. You would never encourage such a thing. And I'm sure that your very sane, very reasonable viewers are going to take this message that you're peddling to them here in a reasonable way. I'm sure they're not going to just show up to these Black Lives Matter rallies or any left-wing protest that you say is bad and intimidate the protesters because that's what you're telling them to do. I'm sure they're gonna be incredibly responsible. I mean, it's a joke. Of course, I'm being facetious. We all know where this is going to go. Immediately, the far right broadcasted their intent after they saw the result of this case. As NPR's Odette Youssef explains, in minutes after a jury acquitted 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse on all counts, jubilation lit up on social media spaces where far right extremists gather. In one Telegram channel for the far right Proud Boys, some noted they had taken the day off work to await the verdict. There's still a chance for this country, wrote one. In another channel, a Members stated that political violence must continue. The left won't stop until their bodies get stacked up like cordwood, he wrote. So I think that it's logical to deduce that this is going to accelerate the transformation that we're seeing on the right in America. They're no longer just proto-fascists. They are changing into actual fascists where they do the violence that we expect from fascists. And what's unique about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial is that it's unifying rank-and-file members of the Republican Party with the far right as Zach Bochamp explains in an article for Vox. And at this point, as the Cavernacle puts it, American conservatism is fascism. And sure, maybe that's a little bit too much of an overstatement. Maybe it's a bit reductionist. But I think that we all know which direction conservatives are headed in. They're not moderating. They're shifting further and further to the right. And now this Kyle Rittenhouse case has given them a new sense of joy. They now believe that all of the bad things that the left in America is doing can be addressed if they show up with guns and they defend America in whatever way they want to interpret defense in whatever threat they deem is evil.
from the left. So the problem with this case is that more and more conservatives will feel as if they should basically uh, stand up for America that is being destroyed by the far left, by the communist Democratic Party, and become a vigilante. And, you know, this is a point that George Chidey made in an article that he wrote for The Intercept, and his argument is compelling. So he writes, consider the next time people rally for, say, abortion rights, or perhaps immigration controls, or the next Stop the Steal rally. A free Kyle Rittenhouse means we will now be met with two camps of armed protesters, possibly from around the country, each squad waiting for an opponent to twitch suspiciously in a way that will allow excuses to fly along with the bullets. A body count begins today with this verdict. Every time a proud boy or a neo-Nazi opens fire at a Black Lives Matter rally or its equivalent in the future, they will have Rittenhouse's defense on their lips. And he is exactly correct about that. So I'll link you to his article down below if you want to read the full thing. But Kyle Rittenhouse, he went to Kenosha not necessarily because he supported Black Lives Matter, not because he was outraged over the shooting of Jacob Blake. He went to Kenosha because he wanted to start shit. He explained this in a video a couple of weeks before the actual shooting occurred where he was filming somebody who he believed was a Black Lives Matter protester doing looting, and he said he wished that he had his AR. That was evidence that the judge did not allow to be admitted into the court. So the prosecution could not use that vital piece of evidence. So now other right-wingers who have a bone to pick with lefties, any leftist cause, it doesn't matter. Now they know that they should show up to these rallies armed because the right-wing leaders in this country, like Madison Cawthorn, a lawmaker, and Stephen Crowder, an influencer, they think that that's what they should do. Put your lives on the line, show up, intimidate people, and stop these left-wingers from ruining this country. That's what they want to do. And we've seen time and again more and more anti-democratic sentiment being expressed by the far right and Donald Trump supporters. They think that the election was stolen, so they no longer believe that democracy is a feasible way of changing this country politically. So this is going to lead to them now being especially more violent, knowing that they can get away with it. So that's the issue now. The issue is the outcome and what this will encourage and who this will embolden. And if you're not paying attention to that, then you haven't been following the right shift to the far right over the course of the last couple of years because it's getting very, very uh, horrifying. And this is bad for democracy. It's not going to end well. It'll only end in violence.